Wish you all a happy new day. Let's get right into it. Number 9. The Bottled Fire Starter That clear plastic water bottle in your car, the one for hot days, could burn your car to the ground. This sounds crazy, but it's simple physics. When sunlight passes through the curved side of a clear bottle filled with clear water, the light bends, a process called refraction. Just like a magnifying glass, the bottle focuses those sun rays into a tiny, super hot beam. If that beam lands on something flammable, like your car seat or a piece of paper, it can catch fire. Diani Amuchastegui, an Idaho power technician, found this out in 2017. He was in his truck on a hot day, when suddenly, smoke. His leather seat was literally burning. The culprit was his plastic water bottle sitting in direct sunlight. For your water bottle to become an arsonist, a few things need to be perfect. The bottle has to be clear, and the water inside has to be clear. The bottle also needs to be in just the right spot, at the right angle, to strong, direct sunlight. Firefighters at the Midwest City Fire Department even tested this, focusing sunlight through a water bottle onto paper, and it caught fire. While the chances of your car spontaneously combusting from a water bottle are rare, they're not zero. So tuck it under the seat or in the glove compartment. Number 8. The Chicken Contamination Catastrophe Rinsing raw chicken under the tap doesn't clean it. It actually sets the stage for a kitchen catastrophe. You're transforming your sink into a bacterial splash zone, spreading pathogens like salmonella all over your countertops, utensils, and even onto other foods. Scientists used high-speed imaging to watch what happens. The force of the water creates droplets that travel far beyond your sink, each a tiny germ carrier. Instead of washing away the threat, the water disperses it. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has been saying it for ages. Do not wash or rinse raw chicken. Modern processing methods already clean the poultry. Any leftover stuff just evaporates or can be dabbed with a paper towel. Washing it creates tiny bacteria vehicles. And washing doesn't kill the bacteria. Only cooking the chicken to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit reliably kills them. The splash pattern changes based on your faucet's height. A higher faucet sends those germy droplets even farther. Your kitchen sink can become an infection zone. Skip the rinse. Keep raw chicken in its packaging until ready to cook. If there's residue, gently dab it with a clean paper towel. Always use separate cutting boards and utensils for raw poultry. Clean surfaces immediately with hot, soapy water. And cook your chicken thoroughly. Number 7. The Flaming Grease Geyser Your pan of oil catches fire in the kitchen. Your first instinct might be to douse it with water. That's a spectacularly bad idea. You're about to create the Flaming Grease Geyser. Burning cooking oil is incredibly hot. Well over 400 degrees Fahrenheit, or 200 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees Celsius. When you throw water on that inferno, it doesn't just put it out. Water is denser than oil, so it sinks to the bottom of the hot pan. Down there, surrounded by superheated oil, the water instantly vaporizes. It turns into steam with explosive force, expanding about 1,700 times its original volume. This sudden steam explosion blasts droplets of burning oil up into the air. Now you have a cloud of flaming grease. With all that new surface area and oxygen, the fire intensifies and spreads like wildfire. What was a containable pan fire is now a kitchen volcano, spewing hot, flaming grease. Burning oil droplets are flying everywhere. A fantastic way to set your kitchen, and possibly yourself, on fire. The risk of severe burns is incredibly high. Instead, smother the flames with a lid, cutting off its oxygen, or use baking soda. A Class B dry chemical fire extinguisher works too. Water on a grease fire is a recipe for disaster. Number 6. Greasing your wounds. You've just scalded your hand with boiling water. Your brain screams, butter. That old trick grandma swore by to slap some grease on it. Generations have passed this wisdom down. Even a 19th century surgeon thought sealing a burn with fat was smart to keep the air out and stop infections. But butter is fat, a great insulator. When you slather butter on a burn, you're not cooling it. You're trapping all that heat inside like a warm, greasy blanket. Your skin just keeps sizzling away, long after the initial burn. The number one rule for burns is cool water, immediately, for at least 20 minutes. Cool water pulls the heat out. Butter does the opposite. It forms a barrier, stopping cool water from doing its job. Plus, butter is food, and food has bacteria. Slathering butter on an open burn is like inviting germs to a warm, moist, greasy party on your injured skin. This makes infections more likely and slows down healing. 
Instead, get that burn under cool running water for a good 20 minutes. This gets rid of the heat and eases the pain. Then, cover it gently with a clean, non-fluffy cloth or even cling film. Definitely skip the butter, oil, or any greasy stuff. Greasing your wound might sound soothing, but for burns, it's just asking for more pain and trouble. Number five, the golden jellyfish blunder. You're at the beach, having a great time. Suddenly, a sharp pain. A jellyfish decided to give you a very unwelcome hug. Your friend remembers a famous tip. Pee on it. It sounds like it might work. Urine has salts and stuff. Wrong. So, so wrong. Jellyfish tentacles are covered in thousands of tiny stinging cells, kinetocytes, each holding a microscopic harpoon called a nematocyst, loaded with venom. When you get stung, these harpoons fire into your skin. The stuff in your pee often acts like fresh water on the sting. This badly messes with the jellyfish's stinging cells, making even more of those tiny harpoons fire. So instead of relief, you get another dose of venom. You're making the jellyfish sting you again. Medical experts are clear. Do not pee on a jellyfish sting. It's not just useless, it's actively bad. First, gently rinse the area with seawater, not fresh water, as that can also trigger more venom. If you see any tentacles still stuck on you, carefully remove them with a credit card or tweezers. Don't rub or scratch. Vinegar can help neutralize the stingers, but not for all jellyfish types. Then, soak the area in hot water, around 104 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. If things get really bad, like you can't breathe or the pain is insane, go see a doctor immediately. Number four, venomous vacuum fail. You've seen it in movies. Someone gets tagged by a snake, and a hero whips out a little suction cup thingy, trying to suck that venom right out. Sounds smart. Too bad it's dangerously dumb. Snake venom isn't just sitting there like a spilled drink waiting for a straw. The moment those fangs go in, that venom is on a mission. It zips through your tissues, hops into tiny blood vessels, and hitches a ride on your lymphatic system. It's spreading faster than gossip. And your trusty suction cup? Studies show these fancy pumps remove about 0.04% of the venom. You'd have better luck trying to empty a swimming pool with an eyedropper. While you're heroically removing almost none of the venom, you're doing a bang-up job of damaging the tissue around the bite. That aggressive sucking pulls out blood and other important fluids, leading to bruising and even necrosis, which is tissue death. There's also the infection risk. You're basically giving bacteria a VIP invitation to the wound party. Sometimes all that sucking and pulling can actually help the venom spread faster. The smart thing to do is stay calm. Keep the bitten limbs still and lower than your heart. And get to a hospital fast. They have anti-venom. The only thing that actually works. Leave the sucking to vampires and actual vacuum cleaners. Number 3. The frostbite friction fiasco. You're out in the freezing cold. Your fingers start to go numb and white. Common sense screams. Rub them, warm them up. But that's where common sense gets dangerously dumb. When it's cold enough, tiny, sharp ice crystals start forming in your skin. These aren't pretty snowflakes. They pull water out of your cells, drying them out. Your body constricts blood vessels, reducing blood flow and oxygen to your fingers and toes. If you rub that frozen skin, you're grinding those ice crystals into your already fragile tissue. Imagine trying to smooth out wet tissue paper with sandpaper. When blood finally tries to rush back in, it brings inflammatory compounds like histamines, causing reperfusion injury. Rubbing makes this destructive. You're not helping circulation. You're breaking down cells and increasing pain. The smart thing to do is gentle and gradual rewarming. First, get out of the cold. Remove any wet clothes. Then, soak the frostbitten area in warm water, about 100 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Not hot. And the big one, do not rub. Let the warm water do its job. Elevate the area to reduce swelling. Pain meds like ibuprofen can help because rewarming itself can be surprisingly painful. If things look bad, like persistent numbness, weird colors, or blisters, see a doctor. Number two, starving your sickness. You've heard the old saying, feed a cold, starve a fever. This piece of common sense isn't just wrong. It's dangerously dumb. When you're burning up with a fever, your body is in a fight. Your metabolism is cranked up to 11, working overtime, burning through energy. Every degree your temperature rises, your body screams for more fuel. Starving it is like sending your internal army into battle without rations. Your immune system has T helper cells that communicate using chemical signals called cytokines. When you eat, your body pumps out more of a cytokine called gamma interferon. This is crucial for your cell-mediated immune response, 
which directly attacks invaders. Studies on humans showed that after a meal, levels of gamma interferon can skyrocket, sometimes more than four times higher compared to when fasting. Eating literally fires up the right kind of immune soldiers. But when you starve yourself, your body boosts something else called interleukin-4. This shifts your immune response to focus more on antibodies, which is less effective during a high-energy fever battle. Starving leaves you underpowered. The star of a fever myth appeared in a dictionary back in the 16th century. Their logic was simple. If you're hot, don't add more fuel to the fire. This makes sense if your body is a simple campfire and not a complex biological war machine. A fever is a carefully planned defense strategy that needs a lot of energy. Even chicken soup isn't just folklore. It's warm, hydrating, and packed with nutrients your immune cells need. The steam even helps with a stuffed up nose. When you have a fever, your immune system is at war. Starving it can make you sicker, longer. So, feed your fever with light meals and plenty of fluids. The saying should be, feed a cold and definitely feed a fever. Number one, the moldy bread mirage. You spot green fuzz on your bread. You think, no big deal, I'll just slice that bit off. Good as new. Wrong. That visible mold isn't just on the surface. Behind that fuzzy patch, a hidden network of microscopic roots called hyphae digs deep, way beyond what you can see. Even if you cut off the visible mold, its evil twin is lurking. As this mold grows, it produces mycotoxins, natural poisons that can cause allergic reactions or, with long-term exposure, serious problems. These mycotoxins spread throughout the entire loaf, even into parts that look perfectly edible. Removing the moldy spot doesn't get rid of these toxins. Bread's light, porous texture is a luxury resort for mold, letting invisible filaments penetrate easily. The entire loaf becomes a biohazard. That common sense idea of cutting off the bad bit is a dangerous illusion. A single exposure might not send you to the hospital, but chronic exposure can lead to respiratory problems or damage your liver and kidneys. A small spot of mold on bread means the entire loaf is contaminated. Throw the entire thing out. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.